Well, we've obviously got our little primer bulb. Now we've got a little bit of fuel line. So I'm going to plumb this in. I can't remember what bloody way round it was supposed to go, but I'll work that a bit out. This is nice. We've actually got an air filter on this, by the way. That's actually any good. Usually they're not that good. Either perished completely or... That's too fat. Perished completely or filthy or... Just a useless piece of foam. So, we'll get this on. And hopefully it should fire up. Anyway. I haven't got any new gaskets, so I've got to be careful with the gasket. So, different types of fuel line here. I've got a filter and all. Make sure that I put one of those on. Look, put two different. Well, no, two are the same filters, but it's always good to have a filter. That's the makeshift little job thing that we had in there before. See, that's quite a... That is quite a tall... That's quite a big piece of line. I wonder if that's... I might not need to do both. Where does that come? Oh, uh, yeah. I might not need to replace both. I've got see that filter in there. Maybe you can see it. That's a nice long bit of fuel line, so I might just be able to get away with using that one to come up there. That one can go into the uh that one can go in there. And then what other bit do I need? Oh bloody hell. I'm getting carried away with myself here. I keep forgetting that you lot are sitting there watching. We're well, trying to watch anyway. Um, so I put all that back together and then I, I realised it was a bit loose. It was almost as it's almost as if the cylinder's loose on the engine. So I'm not gonna be able to properly show it now. No, I'm not gonna be able to show it now. I should have it doesn't matter. I've started taking it apart now because I forget you were all there, you see. I don't know what's the matter with me. Anyway. So I'm just going to take it apart and examine that, see what's happened there. It would might it would explain why this sticker was a bit peeled off, as if somebody's tried to get to that screw in the past to try and fix it before they got rid of it. Because all the time when you get these, when you get them from an auction like like this, um, a lot of the time someone's tried to repair it and then given up, or it's it's, it's had it, it needs money spending on it or whatever, so they just get rid of it and an auction. And then uh, the next tick comes along and buys it. That'd be me. So we may have an issue here. We may have stripped bolts. We could have anything wrong with it. Could just be loose bolts, and someone didn't realise it. But I'm in the process now of taking it apart, so we can have a look. If any, if any luck, it would just be bolts that are a bit loose and uh, not stripped out, or anything terminal, no cracks or anything like that. The thing is, strimmers they do get beaten up people have them flat out streaming nothing little mini bits of grass and weeds they have them flat out and uh, they do get beaten up they do get abused streamers um you don't need to have them flat out but a lot of people do so this is from 1998 so it's probably had a lot of abuse in its time however it could be from a little, little person's garden or whatever it could be from someone who actually knows how to use a strimmer in which case it might not be beaten up but it's definitely there shouldn't be loose anyway so I'm going to check it out see what's the matter with it Oh. 
There we go. I know some of you are probably saying, let's start up, take it off, it's going to start up. Stop panicking, you lot. There you go. You're going to have a look at our lovely crankshaft in there. Oh, isn't that brilliant? That's not what I wanted to look at, though. What I wanted to look at, it is, it, yeah, it's loose. So that means our little Allen bolts, our little Allen screws, which are down here. Oh, they're a bit bigger. That means they're just a little bit loose, and all we got to do is stick an Allen key down there. Oh, don't tell me I've got the wrong, I haven't got the right size. Let's go and get the other set. Got Imperial and Metric, you see, because I'm prepared for every eventuality. There we go. Well, that one ain't loose. It's never a good sign when they're not loose, but, it, but it's loose. Well, that one's not loose. I don't know, maybe it's not loose anymore. Right, so I got it going. I've got it going all right. It needs a bit of a tune, but it does actually run. Uh, it just needs a bit of a bit of a tune. But as you can probably see, the old pull start stuck out, and you're wondering how did that happen? Well, I'll tell you why that bloody well happened. Because I got it running nice. I had a camera all set up. I was talking to you lot for ages and everything. Got it running. Then I was talking some more, and then I went to pull it again to start it up again, and it got stuck. But you never guess what bloody happened. I looked up at the camera to talk to you lot again. And I realised it weren't even bloody recording. And then when I looked back, none of it was recording. You didn't see it running, you didn't see anything of it. All you saw was me putting... Oh, you probably just saw me taking it apart because I did the whole lot in one shot, putting it back together and starting it up. So you didn't see none of that, but there you go. There you go. So, yeah, it, it does run. Uh, take my word for it. I haven't got the screws, but I can get some screws to screw that primer bolt together. It runs, not very well. Needs a tune. Um, someone's messed around with that carb. In fact, I'm going to take it apart again. Um, obviously, I've got to fix the pull start first. There's no point in cleaning the carb on something if the pull start's no good. So, I've got to take it all apart. And you can't just take a pull start off on this one. As you can see, the pull start's incorporated in there. So, I've got to take it all apart again to look at the pull start to find out why it's jammed. It's completely jammed. I've tried everything to get it unjammed. It's complete. Something's happened to it. When it was running, I heard it squeak. It went and then jammed. So, something's happened inside there. Um, so, that's that anyway. So, that's just the way it goes, I'm afraid. It's um, frustrating you lot didn't get to see it run, because uh, I've been doing that a lot recently, not pressing record. Or well, what I do tend to do, is I press record by accident, record a load of rubbish of me just setting things up and, and mess moving stuff around. And then when I go to actually press record, obviously I'm pressing stop because record and stop are the same button. So I end up stopping the recording, do a load of stuff, and then press what I think is stop, but it's not, it's record, and then it records a load more rubbish. So then, what I want to actually record isn't what I want to record, is yeah, I don't know, I don't know all the time now, no, I'm blaming it on the heat, it's not even hot here, the hottest it's got is 32 degrees, to some of you that's nothing, but to someone who's not climatised, it's pretty warm, and it makes your old brain sizzle a little bit, but you know what I'm going to do, let's have a look at the grass. I've been re really working on this, on this grass now, it's uh, it's coming out pretty well. I mean, look, there's a nice bit over there, but this is really uh, a bit of moss that comes off the roof. But it's really thickening up quite well. So what I'm going to do now is give it a mow. Everyone loves a mow in the evening.
Yeah, it's not the it's not the best or most perfect lawn in the world, that's for sure. This bit I'm particularly proud of along here. Still got to get to the edges and get a few weeds out and everywhere. But my main my main objective is to thicken and healthen up the grass by mowing mowing and watering. That's the plan anyway. So I've been using this Ryobi I've got all them flies on it. The old uh maybe there's gonna be a storm. Now I've been using this this Ryobi mower now for about a year. It's doing a good job. It doesn't really cut high enough though, it's on its highest setting at the moment and this is as high as it goes. So I'd like it to go a little bit higher, but you won't really find a residential mower that'll go any higher than this does. I don't know how high that is, but you won't really find it. It's only the commercial ones and professional ones that will go any higher. But this is alright. I much prefer petrol, but considering this was um, one to test out, it come out alright. It's not a bad mower, really. So yeah, I like to try and get, <clears throat> I've been really working on that, on that lawn, I have, I've been watering it every evening without foul, because you've got to irrigate, you've got to get plenty of water in the lawn to keep it green, otherwise it'll go dormant if you don't, uh, don't water it often enough. And you've got to mow it, because mowing it, encourage it, it encourages it to grow, just like a hedge, if you cut a hedge, if you prune a hedge often it'll grow, keep growing and stay green. So I've been mowing it three times a week. Um, sort of Sunday, Wednesday and Friday-ish um, just keep mowing it and mowing it even if you don't get a lot off of it just keep mowing it and it's best to mulch as well because you've got to think about it especially if you're if you're fertilizing you you, you want to mulch because if you're fertilizing you're putting the fertilizer down it's going in the grass um, and it's been absorbed and everything and then it's going up and you're cutting it off and then taking it away it's waste of fertilizer. So if you mulch, it goes back down into the back down into the bottom. It goes back down underneath all of here, stays in here, and just sort of rots down and whatever. And that way, it absorbs it again, and you're keeping the cycle going of all the good grass. Not only that, it builds up a good thatch layer, builds up a good layer of grass under there. See, so thickens it up because if you don't, you want to cut it nice and high as well like I said, that's as high as I can get my mower to go that's touching the soil now so that high just up to me little just past me knuckle there, whatever that thing's called so the higher you cut it the better because the more of, there's more grass blade um, for the to catch sun, for it to do photosynthesis, and it's going to be healthier. It's going to grow better. It's going to look better. It's going to stay greener. So you want to mulch, cut a lot, water a lot. You can fertilize if you want to, but you don't have to. Obviously, if you do fertilize, it's going to be better. It's going to be greener, but you don't have to. As long as you keep it watered, water it often, really often. Uh, you know, and cut it often three times a week, water it every evening without foul. Obviously if it's rain, you ain't got to water it because rainwater is better than tap water by all means. And if you've got the means to water it with rainwater, so if you've got loads of water butts that are stocked up and you've got a pump to put a sprinkler on or a hose pipe, do it, but if you're gonna run out, I'll run out of water quick, you see, so that's why you use a hose pipe and it's come up really well. So, so I've been really working on it, trying to get it nice and green, so I do like a green lawn. It's very nice and handy, but you see a lot of people that are really into their gardening, like all the old people around my neighbourhood. Um, they're out there all the time doing their little flower beds, and they've got lawns, front lawns and things, but they're out there doing their little flower beds and things, and looking at their roses and things like that. But their lawn's all brown and, and patchy, and it's got little dandelions in it and things. Yeah, I've got weeds in mine, but I'll get them out later. But it's like brown, and it's all dead, it's, you know... I always think to myself, if you're really into gardening, you want the lawn to be... To me, the lawn would be the, the thing to have nice, and then you do the flower beds as well after. 
you know, you could have the lawn water and put a sprinkler on it, I don't know, people, I don't understand how some people seem to work, but, oh well, I suppose I'm the opposite, I, I keep it to a minimum, don't have many flower beds and I'd rather have the lawn nice, it's not, it's not perfect, nowhere near, but it's getting there, I'm really working on it to try and get it nice, and the winter will come and it will go, it will die again, <laughs> never mind, eh?